So it is January 2022 and I have decided to change my FPV workflow. I am getting rid of the GoPro Hero 9 and upgrading to the GoPro Hero 10. Additionally, I will no longer use Real Steady, and I'm going to go ahead and move over to Gyroflow. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the reasons why I'm letting go of the Hero 9s and switching to the Hero 10, as well as why I will no longer use Real Steady and I will start to use Gyroflow. So let's get started. What's going on everybody? Thank you for tuning in again to another one of my videos. I am starting to sound more and more like Dobo in each video I'm noticing. That intro was straight up Dobo. Anyway, um, let's go ahead and discuss. So by far, flying FPV, especially in locations like this, I'm up north in Poughkeepsie and um, you know, flying over water, over frozen ice. This by far is one of the best drones that you can have when flying FPV. When you accompany the DJI FPV, the sense of security that you get with this drone, as well as with the original Dobo um, helmet or hood and your GoPro, you're, gonna, you're going to get that buttery smooth cinematic footage and you don't have to worry about fail safing. Now, I do have two Hero 9s and I have one Hero 10 now. And the reason why I upgraded to a Hero 10 is because I wanted to take advantage of two unique features that this offers. One is 4K at 60 frames a second when shooting in a 4x3 aspect ratio, as well as 5K in 4x3, 30 frames a second um, when shooting obviously in 5K. And now you might ask yourself, why are these aspect ratios important 4x3? Well, it's because if you're using real steady go, you need 4x3 in order for it to stabilize properly. Now, as of today, well, as of yesterday, actually, there is a new software that was developed by uh, various devs. One, one of the guys' name is Eddie, ironically, and it's a completely free software called Gyroflow. And today, I'm also going to be leveraging Gyroflow to stabilize all my footage. Now, Gyroflow has some unique advantages, such as you can shoot with hyper smooth on. You don't necessarily have to record in 4x3. You can record in a regular 16x9 aspect ratio. But for the comparisons of this video, I'm going to go ahead and treat it as if it was real steady. I'm going to go ahead and shoot in that four by three aspect ratio and, um, you know, follow the normal settings that you will use for real steady go. The second reason why I upgraded to the Hero 10 is because the Hero 10 has this color profile, which I'll leverage today called natural or neutral. Um, it is a color profile that looks phenomenal right out the camera and you don't necessarily need to color grade your GoPro footage. For me, color grading the GoPro flat color profile footage has been challenging. You get some weird hues, either magenta or it's too blue. Even if you lock your ISO um, correctly, even if you lock your white balance, it's just something weird about GoPro footage. So I am amazed of so far what I see out there on YouTube of, of the colors that you can get right out of camera with the GoPro Hero 10. So today we're gonna be trying this out and we're gonna take you along for the uh, journey.
So now I want to share with you my transition from Real Steady Go to Gyroflow, which is the new stabilization software that's out there that was just released two days ago as of February 4th. Um, and it's a free software that's available to all users and it is release candidate one. So that's a disclaimer. You know, there is some bugs that they're going through and testing out, but it's available for us to download and leverage. So now, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, today's footage has been completely stabilized with gyro flow. So I am not leveraging real steady go at all. All the footage that you're seeing today is um, from gyro flow. So in this video, I'm also going to include a comparison. I'm going to choose one clip, probably the epic clip that I got today um, next to this um, cargo train, and I'm going to stabilize it with real steady go. And I'm also going to stabilize it with gyro flow. I'm going to put it side by side and then I'm going to show you real steady go and then I'm going to show you gyro flow. You may or may not see like much of a difference. To me, the difference that I am experiencing is in the software interface itself. In Gyroflow, I am able to tweak so many settings. I am able to see real time um, stabilization. I'm able to see my gyro data at the bottom screen. I'll go ahead and do just a screen record and show you here all the features that you have with Gyroflow. You can choose, you know, how, how much to crop in, how much to crop out. You can choose dynamic cropping and you can see real time as your footage is um, stabilizing the way that it's maneuvering the footage in order for it to stabilize. Gyroflow has a lot of great features. Now, what I truly love about it the most is that exporting or rendering out a, a clip from a GoPro Hero 9, right? In this case, it's gonna be a GoPro Hero 10. It is leveraging the GPU up to 80% from my test. I went ahead and, and tried to render out some old footage that I had, and it's using the GPU up to 80% from what I was seeing, which it equates to a much faster processing time. So I'm able to render um, completely fast, faster than Real Steady Go. Using Real Steady Go to stabilize your footage, we all know that it is CPU intensive. It will take your CPU and put it through its knees. It'll, it'll make your system crawl, if you will. I know that you can stabilize two or three at the same time. That's what I used to do is just open up multiple windows and stabilize two or three at a time. However, a simple five minute clip from a GoPro was taking about 30 to 40 minutes. And that is me with dual 2080 Ti graphics cards on my machine installed on my desktop. So I have enough GPU power to go ahead and process that real steady footage. However, it's not leveraging GPU at all. It's always under five five percent, give or take five, ten percent. Now it is such a coincidence that yesterday I'm filming this video February 6th. Yesterday, February 5th, uh, Real Steady Go through NERC unveiled Real Steady Go 2.0. Now, I know there was rumors out there for everybody that does leverage Real Steady Go, especially the FPV community. I know that there was rumors out there that Real Steady Go 2 was going to come out. In fact, Real Steady Go sent us an email letting us know that we were going to be seeing um, RSGO Real Steady Go 2 coming soon and all the features that it leverages. Now, NERC put out a video yesterday. I'll link it um, in the description below which, you know, he's on a beta um, platform, but he's showing us all the features that you have with, with the new Real Steady Go 2. And it appears that they've done a lot to the user interface. It appears that now you can stabilize or you can preview your footage stabilization in real time. You can also go ahead and do batch exports. Batch exports is pretty cool. If you have a folder full of, let's say, GoPro footage, right, that you know it's going to analyze the gyro data automatically you don't really need to set manual um, endpoints you don't need to manually um, select you know different positions within your clip to use that as gyro data with um, the new rsgo2 real steady go 2 you can just do a whole batch export will take all your clips and just export them all um, and you don't have to just keep you know loading footage one on you know one by one now Gyroflow has a Discord server where the devs are very active and they're very helpful as well. And I went yesterday and I asked them, will you um, consider putting some sort of um, export, batch export feature to Gyroflow? And they said, absolutely. They said, your wish will come true. So it's probably something that they were already working on, not because I asked, right? But they were probably already working on this, but we should see this in the final release 
of gyro flow. Now, the last concern that I have with Real Steady Go releasing their second version is that if you notice, is if you notice in within Nurk's video, they are not going to have it as a standalone app. In fact, Real Steady Go 2 is now going to be part of the GoPro Quick Player. Within the Quick Player, you will open up your your video, you'll go into the menu option and you'll go down to Real Steady through one of the tabs and thus it will open up the Real Steady um, user interface. Now this leads to believe me that you're not going to get a free upgrade. All of us that have the first version, we're not going to go ahead, I think in my personal opinion, we're not going to see an ability to upgrade from version one up to version two. I also don't think that they'll leverage a discount. I think that Real Steady 2 now will have to be paid by anyone looking to take advantage of their new stabilization software. Now, lastly, before I get to my closing comments, you know, when we think about Gyro Flow and we think about Real Steady 2.0, there's not much of a difference, in my opinion, in terms of the stabilization that you're seeing in your video. What it is, what is difference is the cost to you as the consumer and as well as just the ability to control your footage. Now, one huge advantage that Gyro Flow has over Real Steady Go is that right now at its current state, Real Steady Go 1 and I think Real Steady Go 2.0 can only be leveraged with GoPro footage. You cannot let you cannot stabilize any other type of camera footage. So for example, I shoot on various Sony cameras. With Gyro Flow, I can stabilize any of my Sony cameras, anywhere from you know the A7R4 to the new A7 IV the A1, the flagship Sony camera. And there are cameras as well that records gyro data, which you can go ahead and stabilize through GyroFlow. GyroFlow actually has a list, and I think that this list is going to expand, of current compatible cameras that you can um, stabilize. So, you know, GyroFlow is open to a lot of creators. It just opens up the doors to have that smooth, buttery smooth, how I like to say it, butter, buttery smooth footage that you want without carrying some sort of gimbal, without having a three axis stabilizer within your camera. Obviously for us FPV guys, right? A lot of the stuff that we do are manual. And we, when we shoot with cameras, we're not lugging around uh, with a Ronin S for example, or a Zion Crane. We're just carrying our cameras. So, you know, when you think about put, placing those cameras as well on top of let's say a cinder lifter, this is where um, gyro flow really comes in handy because in a sense you might not need stead xp All right, guys, so that's gonna be it here today in Poughkeepsie. Um, talking about my new workflow for FPV. It was two things that I did, again, to recap this video was uh, change from a Hero 9 to a Hero 10 because of that 5K um, at 30 frames aspect ratio, as well as the natural color. Everything you saw today from an FPV perspective was shot at 5K, four by three, stabilized through gyro flow, which we're gonna talk about in a second and also complete natural color so no flat profile no color grading done by myself this is straight out of the camera 
Now, also, you know, what I alluded to, the second change that I made into my FPV workflow was I switched from Real Steady Go to Gyroflow because of all the um, features and enhancements that this platform has versus Real Steady Go, which I talked about a few minutes earlier. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions, comments, suggestions, and don't forget to hit that bell, subscribe, like this video, and um, it is freezing, it's cold, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.